Archer convinced himself, though he didn't convince many other people, that this idea of a world of existentialists all making decisions for themselves would be a world of socialists who treat each other as equals. And it's hard to see, really, why it shouldn't be a world of egomaniacs who treat each other like dirt. How to accommodate individual freedom within a free society increasingly preoccupied Sartre. Having flirted with but never joined the Communist Party, he spent much of the 50s trying to reconcile the individualist philosophy of existentialism with the collective vision of Marxism. You find that between 1958 and 1968, this word liberty, which had been terrifically important, had been central to everything he thought and said and wrote, vanished completely from his writing. The reason it vanished is that he had become much less interested in the individual person, in me, in uh, the self, in one person's fight. The only freedom he believed in during those ten years was the collective freedom which hadn't yet been achieved. The individual, he thought, would be free again once the whole of humanity was free. La liaison du peuple et des intellectuels qui existait au 19e siècle, pas toujours, mais qui a donné de très bons résultats, devrait être retrouvée aujourd'hui. Il y a 50 ans que le peuple et les intellectuels sont séparés. Il faut maintenant qu'ils ne fassent plus qu'un. Non pas pour que les intellectuels donnent des conseils au peuple, mais au contraire, pour que ces masses prennent une forme neuve. Et c'est pourquoi je vous dis, nous nous retrouverons certainement. In 1964, Sartre was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature. Horrified by the idea of being incorporated into the establishment, he immediately refused it. Puisque j'ai été désengagé, alors... La société bourgeoise pouvait bien ne pas tenir compte de mes erreurs passées. Elle voyait là un aveu et elle me donnait le prix Goncourt. Le prix Nobel. Elle vous pardonnait. Elle me pardonnait et elle considérait que j'avais droit au prix Nobel. Ce qui me paraissait monstrueux. When students in Paris mounted a series of protests that escalated into the serious public disorder of May 68, Sartre was on hand to play a role in the rebellion that for a few days rocked the French state. And all the little um, boys and little girls, they came and said, uh, you are a big man, as you always have, so you help us. He said, uh, volontiers, I shall do that. How can I help? You come with us, we, you, uh, you write for us, we are sending uh, la cause du peuple, and uh, you could... Um, you could, uh, you could sign it, you could sell it in the street. He had several trials for that because it was forbidden. The violence with which the police responded to the street protests shocked France and convinced Sartre of the truth of his idea that conflict in human affairs was inevitable. But the May events also inspired him to renew his pursuit of freedom. He was now more convinced than ever that the main threat to individual freedom came from the state and he joined those calling for its overthrow. He was always very revolutionary, ahead of all the revolutionaries. You got to read it. It's, uh, it's total liberty, it's total revolution all the time, revolution for, for everything. Et à partir de 68, lorsqu'il découvre, lorsqu'il proclame que le Parti communiste français est un grand parti conservateur, euh, c'est une espèce de libération par rapport à cette espèce de terrorisme marxiste qui pesait sur lui et dont au fond il n'avait rien à foutre. Donc il évacue le marxisme en 68 et il rejoint sa vérité euh, qui est celle d'une sorte d'anarchisme je dirais. Sartre, the man who had felt free in a German prisoner of war camp, now felt profoundly unfree in Charles de Gaulle's France of the 1960s. He started to lend his name to various militant far-left causes and even became the editor of the extremist newspaper La Cause du Peuple. He was arrested on several occasions 
but always released without charge. As de Gaulle himself put it, one does not imprison Voltaire. I suppose the point is that freedom, as he had conceived it, had always been a fantasy. It had been a very useful fantasy, not only for him but for France. Um, the public reaction to his ideas um, was an immediate demonstration that the individual idea could ignite a fervour and a useful fervour in a mass of people. But the longer he lived, the clearer it became that individual freedom did not exist. Chez Sartre, toujours cette idée de, de l'échec, quand même. Parce que justement, euh, la, la réussite signifierait la fin de la liberté, presque, paradoxalement. Euh, ça, fini, ça signifierait la fin de la liberté, puisque, euh, par exemple, la révolution qui s'installe euh, ne veut plus reconnaître les nouveaux problèmes. Euh, elle est établie, elle est institutionnalisée, et elle euh, désigne comme traître à la révolution tous ceux qui euh, osent encore lever le doigt pour dire « ça va pas » ou pour protester. Euh, donc d'où ce style chez Sartre d'une certaine façon, d'une sorte de, de révolte perpétuelle. As Sartre's ideas became more extreme, even his supporters found it difficult to follow him. In the 70s, Sartre made himself the advocate of social violence, uh, which was in, uh, actually a, a counter-violence to the violence of the government. Uh, and um, 